Now, I didn't think I needed to make this video, but it has become abundantly clear to me that it has to be done. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back in Church Canic. I hope everybody's having a great week. It has become abundantly clear to me that I need to make this video, which I didn't think I need to, but I have customers come in at least once a week asking for the same part to fix their same problem. And every single time I have to explain to them why it's not going to work. So today we're talking leaky carburetors, what to do and what will not work. But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I will reply to all the early commenters. So what's the story? At least once a week I get a customer come in and he is working on his own equipment. He knows exactly what he wants. He knows exactly how to fix it. He comes in with his model number and he asks for a bowl gasket to fix his leaky carburetor. And what do I say to him the first thing? What's it doing? Is it leaking through your bowl gasket? And they say yes. So that's when I go into my spiel that a bowl gasket is not going to fix your leaky carburetor. Now, why do I do this? That's because I want to help the customer and I want to make sure that he actually gets his equipment fixed correctly because he's going to buy that bowl gasket. He's going to take it home. He's going to put it on. And next thing you know, it's going to still leak, except this time it ain't coming out the bowl gasket. So for this demonstration, I am using one of the most common Briggs and Stratton carburetors there is. So why does everybody assume that they need a bowl gasket? That's because when they see it leaking, it's coming right out the side of the bowl. Just like that, right out the side. So one would deduct, it needs a bowl gasket. Well, the truth is the gas is never even supposed to get to the top of the bowl. If you take the bowl off and you got your float right here, it works like a toilet. As soon as the gas starts filling up in the bowl, it shuts the needle off and no more gas can come in if the needle and seat are working correctly. So you got your new bowl gasket on and you think you're good to go, but if that needle's not shutting off, where do you think that gas is gonna go? Right into your air filter. So what else could happen if you put that new bowl gasket on there? If it doesn't go out through your air filter, it could also go into your cylinder and go down into your crankcase and fill your entire crankcase up with gas. So putting that bowl gasket on there will either destroy your air filter or make you have to change your oil. So let's talk about what the real problem is. Now, all of these carburetors work exactly the same way, whether it's Tecumseh, Briggs, Honda, Kawasaki, it does not matter. They work the same with the needle and seat. Now, the one that we've been messing with here, I left the seat out of it just so I can show you how it leaks. But all of them have a place for a needle and seat to shut the fuel off. Now, this one with the Briggs, that is a brand new seat I have there, has a rubber seat with a metal tip needle. And it can be backwards on some of them. Some of them will have a rubber tip needle with a metal seat. It's either one way or the other because it has to seat to shut the fuel off. So if your carburetor is leaking, that's what you need to address. Now, many of them that have this type of setup, this rubber seat, it can go bad with one weird bad batch of gas. Or if you put some kind of weird uh, fuel stabilizer in there. I've, I've seen heat completely mess these up when people try to get the water remover and um, it's completely screwed up their rubber components also. But whenever you put one of these in, whether it's the Tecumseh or the Briggs, this has a flat side on it and then it has one side that has a rib all the way around it. The flat side, when you're putting it back down inside of your carburetor, make sure that the flat side goes towards your needle. And you'll use some kind of like the blunt end of a drill bit that's perfectly sized for that just to press it down in there evenly. And if you get cockeyed on it, you got to take it out and start over. Now to get the old one out, you can either just put some compressed air through here and it'll shoot out or you can pick it out. Well, let's say your needle and seat's fine and your carburetor's still leaking. Let's go over everywhere you still need to check. The most common place to look, and it usually doesn't happen until you've removed it and put it back on, is the bowl nut gasket. They are very prone to leaking if you've had them off. Next, you'll want to check your float. If it has any kind of gasoline stuck inside of it, it's not going to shut the gas off correctly, and that can be an issue. 
on a lot of the older style Briggs and Tecumseh carburetors, they had this fuel inlet that was plastic. And you can actually get a new one because those are very prone to cracking and leaking. On a lot of the Hondas, they have a fuel shutoff built right onto the carburetor and it has rubber gaskets inside of it and they go out quite frequently too. It's going to be the same thing with the two-stroke carburetors. If, if yours is leaking through into your air filter or into your cylinder, you're going to want to check the needle. Make sure that the metering diaphragm is not pushing down on the needle the entire time, letting gas flow through. If that's not it, your needle tip might be bad. Now, these only have rubber tip needles. They do not have any seats. Now, I do have to admit, there is one time that it could actually be your bowl gasket. And that is if you have the Briggs & Stratton Niki carburetor, like I have on this one right here. And when you take it apart, a lot of times you won't even know. The jet will just fall out of the center of it. But it's got this plastic base inside of it that's connected to the float. And when you remove that, it's got a bowl gasket, squiggly one that's up inside here. And it's not necessarily this bowl gasket. Let me peel it off here for you. That is the problem as much, this is the bowl gasket. The little O-ring that comes with the bowl gasket is right inside here, okay? And if that O-ring, which we've seen it all the time, if it goes bad, this thing's gonna leak. And I can't end this video without telling you the infamous, most notorious carburetor that's going to leak no matter what you do. And guys, that is a good old Tecumseh. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a brand new bowl gasket, bowl nut gasket, a brand new needle and seat, that you have soaked this thing, everything looks perfect inside. You can do all that, let it sit, waiting for the customer to come pick it up for like a week and a half. It never leaks. The day the customer comes to pick it up, the entire air filter is full of gasoline and it is leaking like a sieve. I don't know how they do it. I know I'm gonna have a bunch of you guys out there telling me, oh, I do the Tecumsehs all the time and I never have them leak, but you know what? I don't believe you. So <laughs> they are just notorious for leaking. They are about 20 years old now. So, I mean, they're just wearing out, I guess, anymore. I just change the carburetors on those. Everything else I get. And guys, do not forget, if you, you know, even if you don't have a leaky carburetor right now, you never know when it's going to start leaking. You never know when the needle's just going to stop working on you. Get a fuel shut off. I've made a video on these already. I leave a link in the description box below for you to get your own. I'm telling you, it'll save you a lot of time, money, and frustration. Always turn your gas off when you get done using it. Let it run until it dies. And then you know for a fact you're not going to come back to a soaked gasoline full air filter or a crankcase full of gas. So guys, thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. Hopefully this video saves you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me on Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find me at Instagram at TheRealChicanic or find me at Chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks guys, and have a great day.